Hello there. I'm back again with some more drawing this time. It's been a little while. We're going to work on some aquatic creatures. I'm going to take you through the steps of how to draw them using simple shapes and then we'll try something new. So we are going to jump into watercolor. I'm going to be using some traditional watercolor so they can be either cakes or from the tube but if you've got acrylic paint craft paint at home that you want to use, you can definitely do that. Just take a small cup, fill it up about a quarter of the way, and then take a dollop of your craft paint and mix it in there. And that works just as well for our purposes this time. So let's take a look at some of our favorite creatures, including mine, the North Atlantic right whale. Are you ready for this? First, we'll start with our fish, which we have drawn before. So this should be super easy for you. Start with a big circle for the body. Then we'll be using some other simple shapes for the rest. And if you've drawn with me before, you know that sometimes I like to make a little point or a dot that I can draw the line to. That way I know I'm not going way outside of the paper. I've got the right shapes. So once you have a couple things in there, you can use those to figure out where to put the other elements. So if you notice, the tail ends right around the middle of that, the body, right? And so the lips kind of line up with that too. And now I'm drawing the little flipper right in the middle also. So what helps me know that it's the middle is I can look at those other pieces and see that those are in the middle. Use those proportions. So now we've got all the major stuff in there. We're going to add some details, make our fish look more real. Well, it's still a cartoon, but gives them a little bit more character. And a little bit of atmosphere. We'll add a few circles for some bubbles. Remember to put that crescent moon shape in there too. That's what gives it a little shine. All right, so this is a new step for us. We are outlining or tracing. We're going over all of our pencil lines with a marker or a pen. This is so that when we paint, we can still see the lines because the pencil lines would wash away. The other reason we do this is just to make it look more finished. So if there's some lines that maybe you don't like as much in the pencil, when you get to this part, you can make it even better. It's like more practice. All right, time for paint. Now I'm going quickly here. You can watch this again if you like. I'm just filling this all in. So what I've done is I add a little bit of water to my color and then I spread it out and try to go evenly. So the more water you have, the more evenly it spreads, but sometimes that means you've got a little too much. So you can go back and kind of soak it up. Also make sure to rinse your brush in between so that you're not mixing colors too much. Or not for this one. So what I'm doing is layering with the watercolor and like many paints, you have to wait for it to dry before you do the next part. So with this, I've waited for the yellow to dry first, and now I'm going over it with a layer of orange. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want that yellow underneath to show through. So these paints, these layers are sort of translucent. So think about like a foggy window. You can see through it, but not completely. So because you can see through this, you can see the color underneath and that color underneath comes through. Also, when you're doing different colors, you want to move around a little bit. So I painted the orange over the fish and now I've moved on to the bubbles because that gives the orange another second to dry before I paint the lips or the fins because if that orange paint is still wet or too wet, those colors will bleed together, they call it. So the red will run into the orange. Sometimes you want that, but this time we don't. I've got my skinny brush and I'm going over these lines to give them a little bit more interest. I 
The pointed brushes work really well for many different things. You can get the small little details or you can press it out flat and cover a big space. And you'll start to see now that that orange is kind of pulled in. It looks like it's coming from the body and out. There's our fish. Next up, the dolphin. We'll start with a circle for the head and now I'm pointing a point to the back. So we're going to curve around to meet it and that'll be where the tail starts. So now it looks like a elf hat. All right, triangle on the end for the tail. And now I'm drawing a little, kind of like a hill for the snout. Throw on some triangles here for the fins. Then we can erase these lines that we don't need. I'm drawing some curved lines around where the fins are and the tail. Because we draw those shapes that we know to begin with so we can make sure they're the right size. And then we'll go back and draw how we really want it. A little curvier. All right, so same with the head. So I'm drawing that line all the way around and same with the bottom because the chin was gonna be too bulbous and so is the head. All right, we've got a couple other things to draw in there. We've got the eye and the blowhole. So I'm going back, erasing, and then redrawing over some lines to make sure it's exactly how I want it. Time for the next tracing part. So we're outlining again with our marker. And you can just slowly draw over your lines. One trick is if you're drawing in a small area, you're just kind of moving your wrist. But if you're drawing a long line and you don't want to have to draw a couple lines to make that one long line, you're moving your whole arm. And it's not exactly easy. So that takes some practice. Alrighty, check out our dolphin. So this next technique I'm going to show you is a little different than what I did before. I'm filling it in with just water. Well, my my uh, leftover water, so there might be a little tint in there. But right now it's just filled in with water and then I'm gonna take the color and add to that. The reason that I'm doing it this way, that's different than the other way, is so we can fill in the whole space evenly. And this way we don't have as many brush strokes to show. So this can be a pretty good way to do it if you're filling in a big space. The difference here also is that now it's pretty watery and it will take longer to dry and sometimes dries a little differently than we'd want it to. So what I've done is I dried out my brush, rinsed it and dried it out, and then I'm going in and using that kind of like an eraser. So I'm soaking up all of the excess water and paint and wiping it on the paper towel. So now by the time I'm done, it should be all one even color across, not as watery, so it'll dry faster and it'll look a little bit lighter because there's not as much paint there anymore. So remember how I mentioned it being like a window? Now it's less foggy. It's like we've cleaned the window a little bit. You can see through it a little bit better. So once that's dry, I'm going back on top of it and adding some shading so our dolphin looks more realistic. So this looks like a pretty hard line right now, like like our dolphin just like had like a blue popsicle and it's got stain all over its face and everywhere. So this is what we want it to look like at first. Then I've dried off my brush and what I'm going to do now is go back and spread that out a little bit more. So that paint is still wet. And that means we can push it out some. So you can see it kind of starts to look more hazy around the edges. It's blending in. And if there's too much paint and water on the brush already, that, that makes it harder to do unless it's pretty dry. 
But in this case, yeah. So dry off your brush, go back and just go around the edge and kind of blend it out. Watercolor is not easy. I'm going to tell you, I actually really didn't like it for a long, long time. Then I discovered some tricks. I had some good teachers that showed me how to work with it and I got a lot better at it, but I was pretty terrible to begin with. Now, sometimes you just have to practice a whole lot. Actually, most of the time you just have to practice a whole lot, even if you're good at something to begin with definitely get better with practice. And all this is practice. So if you don't like the way this turns out the first time, then go back and do it again. And if you do like the way it turns out the first time, you can still go back and do it again and get better or do it differently. Ta-da! Our beautiful blue dolphin. Last up, the North Atlantic right whale. So the North Atlantic right whale is an endangered species and it's kind of an odd shape. So I've got two ovals at angles and a triangle. And I'm using those to get the overall shape of the whale. And for the fin, they have more of a squarish fin. So I've got that at an angle over top of what looks like a sausage right now, but we're gonna make this look like a whale, not a sausage. So remember, we've got those big shapes in there to measure and make sure it's going in the right direction and it's the right size. Then once we draw the lines how we really want them, we can go back and erase those original lines. All right, there's like a piece of pie cut out for the mouth. I'm going and doing the tail like I did with the dolphin. So going back over top and curving it. And the fin is a little bit curved too, even though it's mostly a square shape. It's got a little point. And I'm gonna make the mouth kind of squiggly. I'll draw the lips on there and then some callosities. So the callosities are like birthmarks. They look like barnacles. They're actually more like calluses, but it's how scientists tell the whales apart. It's how we know how many there are in the ocean and that they're endangered as we can spot which one is which and how old they are and all that cool information just based on that. So the right whale has baleen. These are different than teeth, but it looks like a cool smile anyway. All right, next, like our dolphin and our fish, we are using our marker or pen to outline our whale. The North Atlantic right whale is actually Georgia's state marine mammal. And now as of December, 2019, that is the month that is officially right whale awareness month. And if you live around here, you might get to experience whale week. We're almost finished with the outlining. Now remember, you're just going over your pencil lines and it doesn't matter if it's exactly on top of it, but this is your final one. So we want to make it exactly how you want it to look. All right, again, like the fish, I have added water to my paint, then I'm spreading it around. So the trick is to put a lot on there, or I shouldn't say a lot, but put enough on there and then move it around quickly. Watercolor is not the easiest. I actually never liked it when I was little. It took me a really long time to get to like it. I didn't quite understand how to do it, but I had some good teachers and I practiced quite a bit and got way better at it. I always thought it was really hard, but now I feel like it's easier than the other kinds of painting. I know which brushes to use. Like here, I'm back with the little brush 
and I'm adding the shadow at the bottom. It's a little bit hard to see, but I'm doing this just like the dolphin where I add the shadow and then go back with either a different brush or the brush that I've been using just dried out and blend those edges. So we wanna blend the new layer of paint into our first layer of paint. So it doesn't just look like a hard line and it looks more realistic. Something to think about when you're adding shadows is where is the light coming from? So most of the time your shadow is going to be on the bottom. So our whale right, is in the ocean. So the light will be coming from the sun, right? So the shadow should be on the bottom. Unless there's the submarines going underneath and it's lighting up the bottom of the whale or somebody's down there with their scuba gear. Most of the time, the light is going to be coming from above. And that's how we know where to put the shadows. Now the right whale is actually a bit more gray, but since our right whale is a little bit different, she's a cool cartoon, I've added some blue in here just to make it a little bit more fun. I'm adding a little bit of shading to those callosities too. So they're kind of big and lumpy looking, like rocks. So think about that when you're painting them. Another good thing to do is to reference a photo. So that's what I do when I draw these. I look up photos of what I'm drawing and then I create it from there. And there we have our right whale. Thanks for joining. I hope to see you next time. You did an awesome job.